Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop board game bag check. Tonight I am going to be checking in this game. I am Motuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight the question we are answering is what's in the box because I can't let this game in until and check it until I know what's inside. So we're going to do a live recording here. We're live on Twitch right now. For those of you here on YouTube, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Tabletop Bellhop. Uh, we stream usually Wednesday nights, recording our podcast, Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. Thursdays, we do things like these recordings. Sometimes we play some video games. Friday, do we do actual plays, usually Gloomhaven. But you probably don't care about that. Right now, you care about what's in this box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the shrink on this. I'm going to read off the back of the box, which looks like it's going to have quite a bit in it. And I'm going to tell you what I think about what I'm seeing. So you're going to get to see this at the same time I have. I've never opened this game before. I've never played Cans of Caledonia. The only thing I know about it is there are an awful lot of you out there on the internet, talking on podcasts, talking on Twitter, saying that this game is a great next step to Terra Mystica, or a, next, a great game in that Terra Mystica Gaia Project style game with a really cool um, Scottish theme. And I got to admit, I am a huge fan of Terra Mystica, Big fan of Gaia Project. I gotta admit, more of a fan of Terra Mystica. So really looking to check this out. I bought this game myself. This is not a review copy. Nothing came from Karma Games. There's no compensation here. This is something I bought myself. So I am taking a look at this for the first time. I'm about to crack this open, just using my hobby knife here. Um, I did purchase this from the CG Realm. Awesome game store in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Uh, managed to get it for $68 Canadian, tax included. Even better than that, I picked it up on Boxing Day, so it was another 20% off. I uh, gotta love the CG Realm. I host events there, so I guess that's a bit of disclosure there. Uh, but one of the best local game stores in the area. All right, so we have the box here, a nice matte box. Um, yeah, does that not say it's a Euro game? Bunch of farmers on the cover. Hey, who knows? Um, gotta admit, do not like this dark green on the gray text on the back of the box, but hopefully that doesn't continue on to the components. Clans of Caledonia is a strategic... Wow, I can't talk today. Take two. Clans of Caledonia is a strategic and interactive... That's an interesting term to put in a description. Economic game set in the 19th century Scotland. Inter strategic and interactive, a.k.a. it's a Euro. During this period, Scotland made the transition from a predominantly agricultural economy to an industrialized one, heavily reliant on trade and export. Food production increased to support the growth in population, cheap cotton imports increasingly replaced linen, and raising sheep gained importance. Also, whiskey turned into a premium alcoholic beverage in Europe. As proud members of the old clans, you use your unique abilities to earn the greatest wealth and fame. Features such as a modular map, nine historic clans, and various scoring and port tiles provide you with outstanding replayability. ASA 9 different clans does kind of remind you of it. We got 239 wooden tokens, four map modules, one market board, one export board, four player boards, nine clan tiles, cardboard markers, play money, I'm amused it says play money, and two rule books. All right, enough about seeing my face and me reading. I'm sure you can read yourself. Could have found that on the internet. Let's take a look at what's in this box. One thing I will note, this is a very heavy box. This is not like, wow, look at all the stuff. Look at all that. That is a lot of stuff. There is there is a bag of components here. That's that's nice. That's not even that weight though. Like that's light compared to the, the weight of this box. It's a lot of bits. We'll get back to those. We got some dice. There is dice in here. Oh my, a Euro game of dice with some unique symbols on them. Bag of baggies. Big thumbs up for that. Love it when companies include baggies. Uh, you know it's gonna be a complicated game when you got one of these, scoring pad. And we are glaring pad. We're going to call it the glaring pad now. There we go. <coughs> All uh, icons, so language independent, which is, can be a good thing. Summary cards, yep. Summary cards. Four summary cards. Two-sided. Yeah, this doesn't look like a light game. Um, <laughs> very soon, again, uh, this game has been compared to Terra Mystica a lot. In Terra Mystica, there are eight or 11 different actions you can take. And each is, um, it's a lot of things to remember. I see eight different actions you can take in the Clans of Caledonia. Uh, these are two-sided because they're in English and German. So it's not it's that many different actions, but there are eight of them on here summarized. 
full text and icons. Then we got a rule book. Now what's kind of amusing is I've unboxed quite a few games tonight and they've all had rather thin rule books. This would not be a very thin rule book. I do like the size, uh, great looking art on it. The components are very well highlighted here. Oh, lots of nice examples. Dark text, light background, thumbs up. Font is nice and large. Lots of examples. You got call outs. You got important things, things bolded. Looks like a very solidly laid out rule book. There, wow. These two pages alone, that's a lot of text. This is not going to be the lightest game I've ever learned, that's for sure. All right, looks like the rules end. What page? On page nine. So we have nine pages of rules and then some references. Nine pages isn't terrible. That's it's definitely not the heaviest game I've ever seen. Then we have the same thing in German. This wow, this is hard to get out. This is a very tightly packed box. And I have a feeling that the rest of this box, and you can see the depth here on the video, is cardboard. Let's do it this way. Look at this. Look at that. Wow. That's a lot of cardboard. That I, I almost feel like I'm looking at um. Oh, what was that game? The Epic, The Colonists. Look at that. That that's we talk about heavy cardboard. There you go. This this shouldn't have been a board game bag check. This should have been a cardboard code check. Look at all that. All right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toss the German rules on the bottom here. And I'm gonna flip through these punch board. Wow, okay, those are well cut. That coin just popped right out by me just putting a little bit of pressure on the back. So nice well cut board. I'm gonna try to slide that back into spot. Um, cardboard coins, metal coins are always nice. Um, this says Clan, Clan McDonald, which of course may have unique rules. I don't know. I have to assume with that many different cans, it's asymmetric. Clan McEwen. You got hex tiles. You got little tiny tiles. Got to say the iconography is very clear. That's really easy to see. I'm going to be able to see that across a four by four table easily. That's nice. Some form of tracker scoreboard or something. Artwork's very nice, very clear, very easy to see. Oh, nice. It's got to be a market board. How could that not be a market board? It's got a nice chalkboard look to it. I dig it. The aesthetic's really nice here. So obviously, we have a bunch of different goods. It looks like we have wool, grain, milk, bread, cheese, and whiskey. And there's obviously a market. You got an economic game for sure here. That is something we haven't seen in, say, Terra Mystic or Gaia Project. All right, so we have crates on one side, and on the other side, I'm going to guess this is some type of demand, probably for the market, and lots more coins. Then we have the first part of the modular playing board there. Um, all right, one small complaint at this point, haven't played though, these numbers on these tiles, if those matter while you're playing, that could be a bit hard to see from across the board. Everything else looked nice. I could see that being, what's that say, what's that say? Because that, it's a small number one in a coin and a small number six. That's a little tiny. Again, I haven't played, so I don't know how the impact would be. I'm going to punch this just so you can see the size. So there's your it's two-sided, and I do know you're going to be able to combine these in multiple different ways. So it's not like you're going to build every hex. It's a set of hexes. Again, I was very impressed by how that came out. That punched very nicely. <laughs> I don't have the skill to put it back in to restack everything here. There we go. Got it. All right, put that back in. All right, more modular player boards with more, I don't know, whatever the market, the crate tokens are, and more. That board's gonna be able to go together a ton of different ways. Lots of replayability there. All right. So again, stuff's really nice to see here, but man, there that's scary. There's a sum symbol here that literally goes up to 161. A little sum chart. Scary in a good way. Uh, a couple more clan tokens, clan cards. I don't know what this board is, but some kind of huge market board here. Looks like every player is going to get one of these. Yeah, okay, so that's the back of the player boards. So that's your player board, and that's the back of your boards. Got probably end game scoring or how to set up one of the two. I don't know. 
I said, this sum scares me. There's this sum here. Zero to 115, you get one star. 116 to 130, you get two stars. Who knows? Um, oh, I know what that says one. So that's probably a one player scoring. So depending on how well you did. So it looks like there's probably solo rules. Fair enough. I don't tend to play solo games. There are some great content creators out there that just cover solo games. I suggest checking out. That, this is a ton of cardboard. Wow. Like that's, that's again, I'm going to show that off again. Look at all that. That is a lot of cardboard. All right. We're going to put all this stuff back and get to these components because there are a ton of little bits here I want to check out. We're going to move all that to the side. I'm going to throw this up here. All right. Starting with the dice. Dice are in an annoying little plastic baggie that I'm not going to be able to reseal. Came open easy enough. Um, plastic. Okay. I thought they might be wood. Plastic dice that have resources on one side, minuses and pluses. My guess is this is going to be your market fluctuation, but who knows? My guess, you're probably going to roll this and like the, right there, the price of grain is going to go down by two. Oh, uh, the price of cheese is going to go up by three. Nice, clear, easy to read. I have no idea if that's actually what's going to happen, but that's what that looks like to me. Baggy with lots of baggies. All right, let's just grab randomly. What do we got first? We have, I'm going to guess player pieces. Reds. Wow, there's some neat little bits in here. All right, we're going to take them out one at a time. But if I notice that the other colors match these, I'm only going to do these colors. So in red, we have a hexagon. Hopefully you can see there. Yeah, perfect. We have a bunch of cubes, little red cubes. Cube. Cube. Cube, cube. Cube, cube. We have a star. I like this little component. That's a nice little wooden star bit. A star. We have a circle. Disc, I should say, not a circle, a disc. And then we have, I don't know, a money bag or possibly a metal. Like a, like a, you know, first place kind of badge. I'm not sure. So there's the components you have for the, the, the red player. So six cubes, a hexagon, a star in a circle, and whatever this is supposed to be. So those are the red player pieces. We're going to keep these little tiny baggies because these are nice. They reseal. Like, I know they gave me other baggies, but I'm probably just going to stick to these, especially if this is, hey, red, here's your player pieces. All right, yeah, same thing in white. So I'm not going to open that. I don't know what the other player colors are, but let's see. Yep. Uh, nope, this is something different. So we'll put that aside. Nope, this is something different again. I don't know. Lots of stuff. You know what? Random bag. What do we got? Oh, there, random. Light blue. Same deal. Same pieces as the red. So it looks like there are multiple sets of things for each player color. Because then, I, yeah, same thing for black. And I think we have the player colors. So again, sticking to red. So there's another bag of red stuff. So I'm probably going to take these apart and put them in a bigger bag so that all the red pieces are in one spot. Especially when that happens and the top of the bag rips just above the seal. I hate when that happens, but technically they gave me better bags. This is just a shipping container. So what do we got in this one for red? So this isn't going to be a quick unboxing just because of these. So I have a marker to mark wheat. Some bread. Little breads. Oh, I should... You can probably see these. I probably don't need to hold them up close, but bread. Uh, shaft of wheat, shaft of wheat, breads, cows, or sheep, maybe. Could be either. Could be either. Um, then more of the same. Yep, yeah, more of the same. Probably sheep, just because it's a Scottish game. So four of each. So there you have the red components. We'll pack those up. Uh, nope, that's different. <laughs> wow. Different. Different. Okay, same deal for white. Same deal for blue. Same deal for black. Sticking with red. More stuff for red. Wow, there are a lot of different bits for each character, for each player in here. Yeah, okay. These baggies are going away. We're, we're switching to the premium baggies after this. They don't want to. All right. Now, what do we got? We got cheese. There's the sheep. Definitely sheep. And whiskey. 
Uh, same deal, four of each. I'm not going to bother putting them all out there. Four of each in red. And of course, we have the same thing in white. I almost should be rebagging these right now. <laughs> Here's the black whiskey, cheese, and sheep. Here's the blue whiskey, cheese, and sheep. Next, desiccant package. Pro tip, if you live anywhere there's humidity, keep these. Keep them in your games. They will keep, especially games, lots of wooden components from getting moldy. All right, these look like our Scotsman. These are the, 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 I don't know, something about them. The, the most detailed little meeple ever. Oh, they have kilts. Wow. We have meeple with kilts. Look at that. Meeple with kilts. And then the barrettes, too. Cute. <sighs> Very cute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. Eight kilted meeple. I, I'm glad I got this game just because it comes with kilted meeple now. Again, red, white blue and black so now we got some other stuff that doesn't match the player colors so we have a bag of cheese i'm gonna just take one out it is a wedge a yellow wedge of cheese bag of cheese wedge of cheese uh angle angle there we go wedge of cheese simple enough we have shafts of wheat Shafts of wheat. Shaft of wheat. We have whiskey barrels in brown. Uh, soon I'm going to just start ripping these little tiny baggies I thought I was going to keep. <laughs> Again, you don't need these. These are for shipping purposes. Nice little barrels. If I ever decide I don't want to play this game again, I'll steal these barrels and use them for my D&D games. We have milk cartons that actually look like little milk cartons, which is kind of cute. Milk jugs. Milk jugs. Definitely jugs. Milk jug. All right. And bread. Almost to the end. Almost there. A lot of little bits. Holy cow. A ton of punch boards and a ton of wooden bits. I dig this game just for the amount of clients. Little loaves of bread. Loaf of bread. Then I have no idea what the next things are. They look like bottle caps. I don't know what they represent at all. They're kind of little spiky cylinders. Little spiky cylinders. Um, there's a definite texture to the edge of that. I don't know how well that's coming out on the video, but there you go. Then I have no clue what the heck these are. It's like a cloud of shamrock and tree roots. I have no idea. So you have a little green tree thing. You got a puffy cloud. I apologize for how bright that's coming out on my fingers. And then, I don't know, a tree root or something. No clue what those are. Three components there. And then finally, we have some clear discs. I am, I gotta admit, this is another one. The more I look at it, the more I unbox it, the more excited I am to play it. This just looks really cool. Um, for what I gotta admit, it looks very dry when you see pictures of it online. Some really nice components here. Okay, clear discs. Whole bunch of those, little baggie full of those. So there you go, that's it. That is the ridiculous amount of stuff. Like, look at this pile. Look at all that. I almost wish I'd opened them and you just have a pile of stuff there. A pile of stuff you get in Clans of Caledonia. That looks rather good. Um, components are fantastic. I'm shocked by how dry it looks, like just looking at the back of the box, for how impressive those components look. So there you have a tabletop bellhop unboxing video of Clans of Caledonia from Karma Games, a game that many people are telling me is, um, if you dig Terra Mystica, you're going to love this game. I dig Terra Mystica, so I'm looking forward to loving this game. If you want to hear my thoughts on Clans of Caledonia once I get it to the table, 
The best place to find out is listen to our podcast. Uh, you can catch us record it live Wednesday nights, twitch.tv slash tabletop bellhop. At the end of the show, the last segment of our show is called Tabletop Gaming Weekly. Or um, Bellhop's Tabletop. Sorry, we renamed it. Bellhop's Tabletop. But the whole thing is we talk about the games we played in the week previous. So you get to hear my thoughts about this game from the first time I played to the third time I played to the fifth time I played. Eventually, though, I will publish a full review. There will be a a written review on my blog, tabletopbellhop.com. When that comes out, we'll also talk about it that week on the podcast in our review segment, which is The Game Room. In our game room, I'll do a detailed breakdown, an uh, overview on how to play and my final thoughts on the game, which I'm going to guess are going to be positive, but who knows? Uh, another note, I did buy this one myself. This is not a review copy, so you can trust that my opinion on this will be my own and mine only, Well, as well as the, the thoughts of my wife and the other people I play with, of course. Uh, if you dig this video, head over to tabletop, or um, sorry, patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop. Please consider tipping your bellhop. It would be greatly appreciated. Uh, your support there helps do things like pay for our web service, keep our podcast going, and um, help do things like we have better lighting for these uh, videos than I ever have before due to having some new lights installed up there. So I would love to get some either even better stuff as well, even even better components and be able to, to bring this to the next level. I would love a nice bright overhead light to get rid of all these shadows you can see and try to reduce some of the glare. Um, other than that, you can find me at tabletopbellhop.com. You can find me online, social media everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. I think that's all we need tonight. Thank you very much for joining me for this unboxing video. I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good night and game on.